Good evening and welcome to the Triple Club <coughs> uh, Crime Control Prevention Meeting. We'll call the meeting to order. Um, let's do a roll call. Stories on here, Joe. Um, no, no, Joe Teleth, and I'm here. Fred Lohman. Heath Williams. Mark Bartels. Christopher McAllister. And Leo Daniels. Okay, for our next point of order, we will have public comments. We have Ms. Art. Oh, Nicole. First and last. Your first and last. Really? Yes. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? This a little high. Yes. yes. Okay. I'm super nervous, so just bear with me. Okay. I was going to speak. What? It's too loud. I was going to speak to you as a concerned resident who lives and votes in Trophy Club, but now I'm going to speak to you as the wife of the police chief first, resident second. Yes, I am a wife supporting her husband, just as I'm sure each and every one of you would do if you were in this situation. Patrick doesn't have a Facebook account, but I do, and for the past nine months, Patrick, the police department, and you, the CCPD board members, have been tormented on social media. I'm here to tell you that the slander, defamation of character, and harassment is not true. You all know, just as his coworkers, his friends, and family, we all know that Patrick is a man of the highest integrity. He is kind, honest, and always does the right thing, even though sometimes it is hard. In the most recent situation, the PIO made a mistake, and now Patrick is once again being slandered on Facebook. This cyberbullying has got to stop. Patrick is not trying to hide anything. I'm just one person speaking here tonight, but I know that the majority of the town supports you, the board members, the police department, and the chief, my husband. Thank you. Thank you. So, can we engage or? No, yeah. Not yeah. Not I didn't think so. Didn't yeah. think so. Um, okay, that's all we have for public comments. No, no, we have for the, that, that'll be part of the hearing, but that's not for the public. I actually gave a public comment for discussion here. Oh, it says on oh. agenda item 2A. Okay. And you're on budget and public comments, budget and public comments, okay. Okay, so this is Jennifer Olson? Yep. Yes. Please, come forward. <clears throat> My name is Jennifer Olson, 340 Inverness Drive. The secret manner the CCPD board is functioning in is demonstrating the board positions are actually more for approval only with zero oversight. The police chief will present the police department's wish list, mostly outside legal ramifications of what the state law allows and the board approves. CCPD is a special district under the police department and errors are made regularly. What can we do about this? The police has spoken. I'm sorry, the police, the public has spoken, and yet the public continues to be ignored and not informed timely about the actions of the CCPD. Makes me wonder if this is an approval only board or do you provide any oversight at all? My first suggestion relates to a highly emotional charged discussion about the safety of children during school hours. In this CCPD budget, there is no program set aside to discuss crosswalks during the school year. Many parents have complained the town and the town's social media pages, but the issue has not been addressed. Using CCPD funds would be a perfect solution to provide funding to the safety of school children, pedestrians, cyclists, and drivers. Safety of children leads me to my second suggestion. Add SROs to the elementary schools. Currently, the general fund provides two student resource officers from Trophy Club and one from Roanoke. How about we make the schools just as safe as when we enter the town of Trophy Club, thanks to the flock camera system? We all know every time someone enters the community, but we don't have any idea of who's entering our schools. Um, now the camera system takes me to my third suggestion. The fire department has been completely neglected and provided no working surveillance system since November of 2021. Multiple criminal incidents occurred in front of the fire station, but yet there was no camera footage to review the crimes. According to open records requests, 
two memos from the interim fire chief, David Jones, on May 25th, 2022 and June 2nd, 2022, included a hard, hard drive failure and the vendor could not access any footage remotely for six months. Kind of strange the fire department was unmonitored for six months and no one knew anything about the failure until an open records request came across the police department's, the police department's desk. Maybe invest in the fire department's security too. We only have three government buildings in Trophy Club and the, t and the town is responsible for only two. This building that we're in now and the fire department. My last and fourth suggestion would be to create an annual calendar of CCPD meetings. Instead of a three day notice, how about a heads up at the beginning of the year? More residents would be involved and the CCPD would ensure a quorum. The May 25th meeting only had four of seven CCPD members present. I brought an example of Fort Worth CCPD proposed calendar. At the beginning of the year, all residents, the community, the town, anyone interested knows exactly when it is and people can adjust their calendars accordingly. There were some people who wanted to come here today but could not attend due to the untimely notice. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it for the public comments? No. Chris Olson. Chris Olson. Speak now. Yes. Chris Olson, 340 in Ernest Drive. I look across, this is my second meeting I've attended. Still, we don't have a, we don't have a full group here to talk to. Uh, six out of seven, that ain't bad, I guess, at least as it relates to this board. It should be seven out of seven. Um, the man to my right has every right to create a budget as a manager of a department. You do, I agree with that. What you don't have is a capacity to spend taxpayer dollars whenever you or however you'd like to. That's where the checks and balances come in. That's where you folks come in. At least that's what I thought. I've witnessed this now twice personally in front of this board and I've seen videos over the past few months when they've been available. Mr. Bartles, is he even here? There he is. Mr. Bartles, you were sitting over there, I think, last time. Maybe I could be incorrect, but I'm not going to quote you. But in a social media conversation you and I had on or around May 26th, when I asked you why you don't, as a board member, question this gentleman right here in these type of CCPD uh, meetings. Uh, I remember you responding, hey, no need to. The budget package that we receive, hey, it's put together, it's presented well, we don't have to ask any questions at all. Now, I know we're in a forum right now where you don't have to respond to that. If you'd like to refute that, you're more than welcome to do so. The problem is various residents have asked for the same information that you supposedly are receiving each and every single one of you at these meetings uh, and have met with town personnel. And continuously, there are gaps in expenditures. Uh, according to the discussion in the 525 CCPD meeting, the gentleman right here to my right uh, has well north of over half a million dollars in the 2022-2023 budget to play with. Very little to no programs have been built out and basically itching to purchase whatever you'd like to purchase. Oh, and now that Prop A has passed, got an additional $300,000 for the next 20 years. I highly recommend to this board you begin taking your volunteer responsibilities seriously. You're letting numerous residents down and it reeks, it reeks of not playing by the rules. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Olson. Yes, can, go ahead. Cannot, cannot respond to in the public. 
Thank you. Is my time up? No, that's, your time is up, sir. You I can't say one other item? You cannot. Four okay. Minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have anyone else for public comments? All right. Then let's move on to our next item. We're going to take a look at the minutes. And I'm going to ask for a motion to for the discussion for the minutes for the last meeting. Make a motion. We have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll make a second, please. <clears throat> Has everyone had a chance to do, to review the minutes? If had a second, if you had a chance, then I'll ask for a vote to accept the minutes. I'm sorry, to accept the minutes as written. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. We have six in favor, zero opposed. Okay, uh, we're going to go on to the second item. All right, we're going to have a public hearing on the annual budget. We do have, I believe, one speaker. Is that Ms. Foley? Is Ms. Foley here? Yes, but I was really expecting the chief to do a presentation on the budget. Oh, I apologize. Okay, I apologize. I got that out of order. Chief? I mean, we discussed the budget at the last meeting as it's in the package. Mm. So. And we'll see if we have any public comments, any questions from you guys. Do you have any questions about the budget? Yeah, can you speak to <clears throat> why we have to have legal fees in the CCPD budget? Yes. Well, we've always had some, a little bit of legal fees, but we've increased the budget this year um, in anticipation of the amount of open records requests and legal services we're hiring to assist with some of these AG letters and complaints mm -hmm. that have been filed. So just so we make sure that we get everything right. So and that budget dramatically increased. So. Does that help? No, I mean, we, we've been encouraged to ask questions and. Yes, sir. So basically over the last several months, we've been inundated with open records and we've asked for legal assistance and making sure that what we're providing and how we're doing our open records are correct and legal. And then we started getting uh, AG requests for information. So we've been meeting those requests. So, and we expect that to continue, so. And I know that, I'm sorry, did you have one? No, go ahead. I know that we had some of the discussion before about um, some of the safety programs that have made Trophy Club one of the safest cities in the state of Texas. Can yes, you sir. tell us about some of the programs? Yes, sir. As we as we discussed and, and stuff, I mean, the, the program itself, CCPD is, is the program that we basically live under. Um, the whole town is, is a safety program. So it, it, the CCPD is allowed to fund all the, all the things that make the police department work. So under our generic safety program. So it funds our cars, it funds our personnel, our training, everything we need to keep operating. So, um, you know, some of the biggest things we use is vacation watches. That's where the officers will go out the, and patrol people's houses and, and make sure that when they're not there, nothing changes. So um, we have the SRO program, which we fund. We don't, they actually, the school district is responsible for the schools and the SROs. We enhance that program. And, and part of the, what we did here with the overtime budget for next year is enhance that program even more. So we are- Sorry, Chief, I'm gonna ask you to just, can you flesh that out a little bit more? So without that budget, what do we have? Without the- Without using this budget for SROs? Um, the school district provides the SRO funding. Okay. So we have two people assigned, and the school district reimburses us for those officers during the school years. So. The school district is, is the primary responsible for the SRO program. They pay us to make sure that our officers are there 177 days a year. So um, we provide the manpower, but they reimburse us for that. So, and then we enhance it with the SRO, with the SRO funding from this program. So it gives us, this gives us a little bit of money to have officers go over time to the schools to help out with some of the training programs that we do and some of that other stuff. 
And so we enhanced that this year with that overtime budget, putting that back in. We had, remember we had that years ago, and we took it out during the COVID periods when we weren't getting a lot of help. So um, th that's where those programs come in to help. So those are our two primary things. And then we have all the other neighborhood watches, the um, National Night Out and other programs that help us, the bike safety program, all those things, which we do to help, so. Do we have any more questions? Yeah, I, yeah. Let's park here for a minute. The, um, <clears throat> no, I mean, this is where we engage and discuss, right? But, mm -hmm. And I'm sure. just curious just to get, just to wrap my head around everything. I, and I mm -hmm. sincerely mean this, because yep. the CCPD's evolved since I've been here. Yep. And uh, I mean, you talk about like lawsuits, um, you know, and I just want to understand, I mean, somebody help me understand what the motive with the driver behind just a almost pure disgust with our police chief, this board, and um, the police department in general. I don't understand it. Because speaking of open records requests, I've actually did my own, opened my own open rec open records request, and I think Jennifer Olson has filed like 33 open records requests, which cost the city money to you know uh, personnel money to deal with and everything. I just don't understand. I mean, if somebody can help me understand, because we never have an opportunity to engage. I mean, does anybody know? Or can anybody speak to that? Can you, Chief? No, sir. I mean, I mean, I just, so I'm, I'm at a loss. And I mean, I'm seeing, <clears throat> it just seems like there's just a, I don't know what the driver, what the actual driver is behind that. I don't know. my name, I would love for you to. <clears throat> there have been multiple well, there have been many open records requests because um, prior to when Letty Basic was our, um, I might be saying her name wrong, but she was our town secretary, the open records were filed in a very clean, precise manner. She left middle of February, and then the person that took over that role was the administrative assistant for the police department, Julie Schwartz. Right. Well, ever since February, anything dealing with police records or CCPD are um, denied sometimes immediately for no reason. Um, they are um, um, given some false excuse as to why they can't provide the information or flat out denied. The reason I've opened 33 open records requests is because I've had to request the same information over and over again because it's denied, denied, denied. There are currently um, at least 11 attorney general complaints filed with the attorney general based on the lack of information being being provided by this town but it's from the police department if it was back in Letty's hands i don't believe this would have happened i'm yeah i need to look into why they're denied because well, when i filed those open records chris i don't see any denials I i'm charged one, i'm charged a lot of money my first open records request i was charged sixteen hundred dollars i usually am charged anywhere from two hundred to three hundred dollars i've invested two hundred dollars to the town i know i'm sorry not two hundred two thousand dollars to the town in open records requests and um the attorney general is um looking into it i've gotten you know they're, they're still investigating it on some of these complaints and they actually the town just last week had to finally succeed and give us the information but this was after uh, see it was six it was like 10 requests on the same information okay so that's why here's another question so you filed 33 since october of 21 yeah 33 of them or so give right or take. whatever they're like three in a row they were within a few minutes maybe that's maybe make it call it 30. Mm -hmm. and then you we also mentioned somebody before julie um what's her name no the, oh, the, who was handling these before you? Oh, Letty, basically. Okay, Letty. So uh -huh. again, my question is like, what's, what is the driver? Because it, it just seems like- Denial of information that should be public information and the CCPD is not providing information to the public. There are a lot of errors, mistakes. The, I mean, I, are you, do you guys ever monitor the CCPD webpage? I take screenshots of it. There, there's constantly, oh, sorry, we didn't mean to post the wrong flock camera. Frequently, frequently asked questions on there. We gave it to, you know, we, we said it was this, but it's this. And sorry, that's the wrong date. Or it was a type. There, there's just so many errors, it's hard to keep up. So that's why there's a distrust. Yeah, but to answer you, do I look at it? Yes, do I monitor it daily? No, I don't. I mean, I have a, I have a job. Again, when this, this started out, this is, you know, we're, we're citizens just like you. Right. I mean, here we are trying to do the right thing, give back. Um, this police chief, he's never put, I mean, I mean look, look what's on the budget. I mean, SROs, take home program. This is all stuff that makes sense to but us. We but the SROs don't come from CCPD. They're getting reimbursed from Northwest ISD. So why is that in the budget? 
Yeah, and we, we can. I mean, I'm just saying, why is it in the budget? I'm and it saying, actually I, says three, I'm but we only provide two. It, that's not going to, the, the answer is not going to fees or silver. Okay. We're not going to continue. Well, no, I'm just saying it says three, but it's actually two, but Northwest ISC. Right, but we're talking about money and funds needed. and stuff. And then, yeah. you know, like every one of our, our names has been named in like a lawsuit or going to get sued. And, but that's why, yeah, there's, you know, there's a higher interest in it. I don't, I still don't understand the driver. You say lack of, uh, public information i just don't understand well when when you ask driver the, almost the pure hatred for us i think you need to ask the police department why they're not providing public information and why the attorney general <laughs> is responding that's a generalization of it. i mean i guess yes mr chair I, miss mrs olson i'd like to know what specific false denials on your official request what are those false denials what do you mean my in other words what specific reasons were given to you and how many i want i really want to know i will have to get back to you on that i don't have a spreadsheet on that okay. i don't know I, I don't mind getting back to you i have a lot of documents you can on get it. one just we can file an sure. open records report and get one but that's what, i don't see any denial in it our, our agenda item tonight is the budget yes thank you for a reminder um we we do need to keep the issues to the budget if we okay. have to have a separate question we can handle that another time Thank you for that. Apologize for that. Back to um, Chief. Mr. Chair, I had a just a, had a question on the the school resource officers. Yes, if, if thank you. That's pertaining to the to the budget, Chief. I'm just trying to understand. There are national and state standards for school resource officers, correct? Yes. And the decision to deploy resource officers within the schools located within the township. That's a decision that's both the school district, uh, their security program, and, and you, the chief of police. Right. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Is there a specific standard as to why elementary schools are not included typically in those programs? Yeah, it's a decision made by the school district, but it is a, there is standards for that on okay. the threat level assessments and all those things. All right. Thank so, you. And our school district does a fantastic job on security and stuff. And, and like I said, this, this funding for SROs is only for overtime and additional training. It does not fund SROs in the schools. It's never have. It's only been there for training and for uh, part-time people to send over there to help out. So. And just one further question, Chief. Uh, are, what security protocols or programs, if any, are available to the elementary school administrators at Lakeview and also uh, Beck. Do they, do they, is there a program? Well, we go there for training, but we also utilize our patrol officers to go over there and check all the doors. We do the lockdown drills. We work with the school district. We send our SROs over there to do spot checks. So yeah, we are constantly working with the elementary schools. And Captain Woodard's here who runs that program. Thank you, Chief. So. Yeah, and so. Are there any more questions for the Chief? I mean. Okay, we did have one speaker. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Chief. Ms. Foley? <clears throat> As a reminder, this good is evening. A, good evening. As a reminder, this is part of the public hearing. Yes. Um, if you can keep your comments to four minutes, and you can ask questions. We can ask questions. We can ask questions. Um, I've been standing because I hurt my back this morning. So if I sit, it's hard for me to get up. And just like driving in a car and sitting. So, anyway, that's kind of explains why I've just been standing the whole time. Uh, Beverly Foley, Eight Oak Village Court Trophy Club, uh, forty-year resident. So I sent an email to y'all plus the city council today about more of a recommendation on how. A budget that I think should be done for a CCPD. So I'm going to read as much of this as I can in four minutes so that it gets into the minutes of the meeting. Um, so this was um, emailed to the board and to the city council today on June 20th. Um, it says, I was going to have the packet for the public hearing. I will be asking for more detail from Chief Arata on the safety community programs. His expenditures will benefit and how much is allocated to each community program. Only a few were listed on the agenda. So um, currently the information on the budget of 22 to 23 is general in nature in what is to be purchased. 
General items that any police department would use and would be funded by a general fund are not designed to be funded by the CCPD and were not related to a community program. Below is an example of how I see the community program should be funded and how the budget should reflect per officer cost, total of all equipment, uniform salary, overtime per hour on community program or events per vehicle, fuel, wear and tear. Many of you probably work for a corporation or a company where you have to do cost analysis. So what I'm suggesting is a, bu a budget that involves cost analysis. So um, as an example, um, he listed vacation, vacation watch and special patrols. Last year, they, he said it, there was a 1,705 home checks. Well, if each home, the officer took 15 minutes a time, maybe that much or more, um, you would have the officers um, broken down to his cost per hour and the vehicle use per mile. Um, just a ball, ballpark range, I took $75. So with the 700, 1,705 home checks, the budget would show $31,968.75. Um, national night out. Two hour, or hours in planning and preparing. Just say there's, you know, the officers have to do 40 hours of planning uh, for 14 different events. So $2,000, the officer, officers that attend at, um, break it down to 25 per hour, $700, vehicle use, 700, supplies, 1,400. Total budget for night, national night out, 4,800. So when you take the 300,000 and you were to take every community program that the police department does and break it down to a cost analysis and show how much of the 3,000 actually goes to each community program. These are programs that benefit the citizens. The police department, when they use the, in general, when they use like the ammunition in the budget or um, vehicles for three vehicles, that, that benefits the police department. It benefits on a second degree to the citizens. But each of these programs that are listed um, needs to be broken down and shown in a cost effective way. So, you know, I know y'all are just going to prove it like it is tonight, but I think in the future, all these programs need to show how much of the police time goes to each program. So I'd like for y'all to think about that for the future. Thank you. Thank you. I understand that. And we, I can engage here or no? I understand that, but I mean, but the, then again, that's a great suggestion. Um, vacation watch, I mean, that, that 1,705 home checks, I mean, that boils down to just a simple matter of time and territory management. If they do a police check on, you know, four houses in a row, my house included, that's not gonna take, you know, an hour. It, you, what, what, what's involved in a home check? Yeah, just going to the house, spending a few minutes walking around, checking cars that are in the driveway, um, and then documenting it in the system that you're here. On all of your home checks, do you walk in the house? We don't, we walk, we don't walk in the house, we walk around the house, yeah. make sure that the doors are shut, yeah. the gates are closed, and okay. the cars that are supposed to be there are there or not there. But I, but I can also understand, I mean, every home check is not gonna be exactly the same amount of time, so right. we're talking about a minimum time, yeah. as and, opposed and to in case you had to have anything additional that you had to do. Right, and that was just okay. a part so that's just an example. Can, can I also that. say one more thing? Well, just one, one second, ma'am, please. Okay. If we could yeah. just, if you okay. can yeah. finish. So that, that was some examples of some of the things that we do under those programs. That was a partial number for this current year. So we do actually a lot more. But in our, in our budgeting software at, at a lower level, not at this level, we have all, we don't have that kind of, we don't do it that way, we do it another way. But it is an open gov. In open gov, you can look at how we break it down by officers and training and all the things that we actually budget for. They're all broken down in our government documents. But Mike, Mike is here now. Yeah, but I'm asking that, yes, I know those codes go into the overall budget and you have supplies and equipment and all that. You know, to show the citizens on the programs that are designed for the citizens and for them to be able to see, you know, 10,000 is going to Fourth of July events or um, night outs that they really see the, how the sales tax is really providing to them. But when it's just done in this group of, you know, cars and ammunition and, and uh, vests or, you know, any type of that kind of stuff, it doesn't show how it benefits them or that, you know, 50,000 is going to the different, you know, home watchers or bicycle watchers and all this. He, I know you can do this in a separate, very simple, you probably scribbled on your, your you know, piece of paper in your office. 
So it, it can be done. And so I'm just, you know, I know they want it to be it into this one format, but they can do this and it could be on the website and it could be presented at the budget time and then throw it into the general uh, categories. Oh, yeah, I will make one comment to that, ma'am. And we're all citizens of Trophy Club and I, I'll reject the premise that the ammunition, the things, the vehicles, the um, bulletproof vests are not important um, to keeping the citizens of Trophy Club safe. So. I mean, if we start from that point, we are all on the same page and trying to make sure that we are getting the right equipment for the police department to make sure that all the citizens are trophy but, but everybody forgets to talk about the real police department budget. This is just an accessory to the police department budget. So we, we shouldn't be funding you know, what I consider really police department equipment in a surplus budget. This budget should be going and showing how it's going to community programs and citizen programs. And again, I will, I will continue to say, I understand that if we were in a position as a country where we were able to fund, where we were not able to, or where we didn't have to supplement some of the things the police departments do to make them better departments, because we have plenty of partners around us who have budgets, who don't have a CCPD, who is able Every to Every town around here has a CCPD. What I mean is that they aren't able to take care of their officers the way that our officers yeah, are taking care of. Yeah, everybody's got a really improves the safety of our town. And a lot of them just have a quarter percent, you know, I mean, an eighth of a percent. So, so, so y'all have, point, I understand what you're saying, but I do understand that it's very I feel like more you take the, you know, the projected amount of 350 and then you start filling in what it can buy. That's not the way to do it. The way to do it is fill in the programs first and then see how much money is needed for those programs, not the other way around. Thank you for your Thank comments. You. Do we have any other comments or any other cards? Because we do have to have them now. Okay. Then we will close the public hearing at 632. I'll call for a motion to vote on the current budget. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the CCPD budget. <clears throat> fiscal year 2022-2023 in the amount of $359,436. $436. A motion? A second. A second. <coughs> a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous. Okay. That is all we have for our items for this evening. There were, since, the, um, since we did have an approval, we don't have any amendments, we don't have anything to approve. I will call for a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll, so make, uh, I'll make that motion. I'll second. All opposed? I mean, sorry, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Thank you. Mm. The meeting is adjourned at 632. 633. Correct. 632.